Ni marung ama atung morderang. Welcome to atung spelling lesson 13. Words like picham and the ping. In this video, we will learn structure and spelling of words like picham and the ping. That these words have meaningful parts called prefix and the reasons why it is not necessary to write double consonants in these words. Examples of double consonants are presented at the bottom of the screen. For this video, you need to understand the words root and bound part, and the words consonant and vowel. If you do not know what these words mean, please watch Atong Spelling Lessons 2 and 12 before you continue with this one. Take a moment to look at the list of words on the screen here. Pidang, Pitam, Pibok, Pinak, Pisak, Pikeng. What is the same in all of them? Look at the beginning of each word. Can you see it? They all start with the bound part P. Pidang, Picham, Pibok, Pinak, Pisak, Pikeng. The rest of the word is the root. On the screen, you can see that the bound part is in gold color and the roots are in green color. Because the bound part P comes before the root, it is called a prefix. On the screen, you see that the structure of the word is prefix followed by root. Again, the prefix is in gold color and the roots are in green color. How do we know that there is a prefix P? We know this because we can take the prefix away and use the roots to make new words. Now we will look at the word pitam as an example. So the word pitam is made up of the prefix p and the root cham, as you can see on the right. That is its word structure with the prefix in gold color and the root in green color. We can take away the prefix and add another root, as in the word wa cham, which has the roots wa and cham. Another example is the word song cham. The structure of this word is again two roots, namely song and cham. Let's now talk about pronunciation. Our example is still the word pitam. This word can be pronounced in two different ways. Pitam with a short consonant. Pitam. Or with a long consonant. Pitam with a long consonant, pitam. So, two pronunciations are possible, but the spelling shows only the structure of the word. That is why we write it like this, and not with an extra letter T. The prefix is P. There is no prefix P. In Atong. So the spelling in black is wrong. 
Two pronunciations are always possible in Atong in words like this because there is a rule in Atong that a consonant between two vowels may be pronounced either long or short. This difference in pronunciation has no effect on the meaning of the word. The meaning stays the same. Take for example the word atong. It can be pronounced as atong with a short consonant or atong with a long consonant. Listen again. Atong. Atong. The meaning is the same. As we know now, the spelling shows the structure of the word. There is only one correct spelling, which you can see here in white, with only one letter T. The spelling in black is wrong. So why is the spelling in white correct? Well, the word atong only has one meaningful part. The word structure is not at plus tong because there is no meaningful part at in atong. This word is just one root without any other meaningful parts in it, so there is no reason to write a double letter T. Only one letter T is enough, as you can see here. Now let us look at the word with the prefix P again. Our example Picham. This word is not a combination of the meaningful parts pit and cham, but it is a combination of the prefix pi and the root cham, like in wa cham and song cham. The spelling clearly shows the structure of the word. We can pronounce it with a long or a short T, but this does not matter for the spelling. The spelling picham shows the structure of the word clearly and there is no extra letter T because there is no prefix pit in Atong. As we have said, the prefix is P. Another example, the word tatang can be pronounced with a short consonant, tatang, or with a long consonant, tatang. But the word is not a combination of the meaningful parts tat and tang. The word is just one meaningful part, one root, but it can be pronounced in two different ways. Spelling shows the structure of the word clearly, and there is no extra letter T because there is no meaningful part that. One more example, the word tetsoto. Again, the consonants that are between two vowels can be pronounced long or short. Tetsoto, tetsoto. But of course, the spelling correctly shows the structure of the meaningful parts in the word. So only the first spelling is correct. This word is a combination of three meaningful parts. The first one ends in letter T and the second one starts with CH. Or, if we say it in Atong, the first one ends in letter Ta, and the second one starts with Cha Ha. The last meaningful part in the word is Ok, just like in the word 
Tengok, Saarayok, and Nukok. The spelling shows the structure of the word clearly. In our last example, we see how the spelling can show that two words are different even though they can be pronounced the same, especially when speaking quickly. The first word, nok plus kap, has two meaningful parts, two roots. The first ends in letter k and the second root starts with letter k. From now on, I only use the atong names of all the letters in the alphabet. If you have forgotten the atong names of the alphabet, please watch atong spelling lesson number one. So, in the word nokap, there are two meaningful parts. The first ends in the letter k, the second starts with the letter k. So we write two letters k next to each other, but each letter belongs to a different meaningful part in the word. The second word, nokap, also has two meaningful parts, also two roots. The first ends in the letter k and the other starts with the letter h, nokap. As always, the spelling shows the structure of the words. It shows which meaningful parts are in the words. Because of the structure of the words, there is a double letter k in the word nokap, but not in nokap, even though both words can be pronounced the same. Now to get back to our words with the prefix p, the form of the prefix is the same in all these words. The spelling shows this clearly. So the spelling on the left is correct and the spelling on the right in black is wrong. There are not many words with the prefix p. Here is a list of all the ones that I have recorded. Pitam, Pidan, Pibok, Pinak, Pisak, Pikeng, Pipuk. When these words combine with other meaningful parts, the prefix may disappear. There is no prefix p in compounds, as we can see here. Words with the root cham are pitam, wa cham, and song cham. Words with the root dan are pidan and maidan. Words with the root bok are pibok, rongbok, and chubok. And finally, with the root puk are tau wak puk puk teng. In words like these, there is no prefix p. Saklang lang, saket wa, kengaidong kua. What is the meaning of this prefix, you may ask? In most words, except in the word pipuk, this prefix indicates that the word is an adjective. An adjective is a word that gives extra information about another word, namely a noun in a sentence. For example, na pikengau sa cha, no pidam sala. To find the adjectives, we can ask the question, atakabana. The answer is na pikeng, and we know that pikeng is the adjective. We can ask atakabanok, 
And the answer is no pidan. And now we know that pidan is the adjective. Only very few words have the prefix p. It is not productive, we say. This means that you cannot make new words with this prefix. There are a few other words in a tongue that also have a prefix, another prefix. Look at the list on the next slide. Do you know what the prefix is? What is the prefix in these words? The ping, the peleng, the kep, tunuk, tama, timimi, tumut. Here we see the structure of these words more clearly. The prefix is in gold color and the roots are green. The ping, the peleng, the kep, tunuk, tama, timimi, temet. We can add other meaningful parts to make words like the pingok. De Pelengok, De Kepwa, Tunukwa, Tamaak, Timimiwa, Tumutbo. How do we know that there is a prefix? Well, because we can take the prefix away and the word has another meaning. Have a look. With the prefix, we have tabayok, the tayok, the pingok. Without the prefix, we have bayok, tayok, pingok. These words have a different meaning. So, what is the meaning of this prefix, you may ask? The meaning is Causative. Compare the words without the prefix to the words with the prefix. Glas bayok. Sa gray glas tau tabaywa. Mat tayok. Kamal matau de tayywa. Tukchi tay pingok. The cow dipping bow. Look again at the words with this prefix. Dipping up, the pelling up, the capwa, tunukwa, tamak, timimiwa, tumet bow. We can see that all these words have the same structure. There is a prefix, then a root, and then some other meaningful part. As usual, prefixes are in gold color and roots are green. What is the relation between the vowel of the prefix and the first vowel of the root? That is a question for you. Take some time to find out. You can pause this video. As you can see, the vowel of the prefix is the same as the vowel of the root. If the root has more than one vowel, it is the first one that matters. On this slide, the vowels that are the same in the prefixes and the roots are colored green. We can say that the form of this prefix is da or taha 
followed by the same vowel as the root. For the spelling, it is important to use the vowel letters E and E correctly. Notice that the names of these letters in Atong are E and E. We do not use the English names for the letters. We always spell in Atong using the Atong alphabet with the Atong names for every letter. You can watch Atong spelling lessons 1 and 2 to refresh your memory. When you write the wrong letter, the meaning of the word may change or the word may not exist. It may be a nonsense word. The plant, which you can see here in the picture, is called ring, written with the letter E, because you hear the sound E, ring. When I want you to drink something, I can say rum with the letter E, because you hear the sound E, rung. So we have two different sounds and two different letters. Listen again. The plant is called ring. Drink means rung. Ring, rung. When I don't know which way to go, I can ask Itakei ma utakei. When I want to show you how to shoot, I can say Itakei kaubo. Notice again that the letter E is for the sound E and we write letter E for the sound E. Itakei. Itakei. Now you need to listen to every word. If there is E or E, and then write the correct letter E or E. I will say each word in the list on the screen. Listen and read. Notice the spelling and repeat each word after me. Here I go. De pingo. De pelengo. Timimiwa. Tumatbo. It is not necessary to write double consonants between the prefix and the root. The words in black on the left are spelled wrong, and the words in white are the right ones and are spelled correctly. Again, listen to the words and notice the spelling with the letter E or E. Di pingo, de pelengo, timiniwa, tumetbo. So, to repeat, the form of the prefix we are looking at is da plus vowel or taha plus vowel and this vowel is the same as the vowel of the root. Take another look at the structure of these words. Prefix before the root. Di ping, de peleng, de kep, tunuk. Tama, timimi, tumut. The spelling presents all the meaningful parts in their correct forms. There is no need for extra consonants. So the spelling on the left in white is correct and the spelling on the right in black is wrong. Di pingo, de pelengo. Timimiwa, Tumetbo. The spelling shows the structure of the words. 
Because of this, it is easy to explain the spelling and it is easy to teach and learn. If you write double consonants, there is no clear relation between spelling and word structure anymore. The spelling cannot be explained. This is not good because it will be very difficult to teach and learn. Students will make unnecessary mistakes. It is wrong to learn three steps like this. When writing words like di ping and tu nuk, you take the roots ping and nuk and you add the prefix da or taha, followed by the same vowel as the root, followed again by the first consonant of the root. There is no prefix dip or tun. This spelling does not show the structure of the words. It is illogical. Why create so many different prefixes when one is enough? Da or taha followed by the same vowel as in the root. It is much easier to learn two steps like this. When writing words like di ping and tu nu, you take the root ping and nu and you add the prefix da or taha followed by the same vowel as the root. The alphabet has the vowels E and E to make sure that the spelling shows the pronunciation precisely. As in the words the pingok and the tayok and so many others with these sounds. Let us now do an exercise to see what you have remembered. Please get a pen or pencil and paper ready. Instructions. You will hear 10 words. Each word has one of the prefixes we learned in this video, namely P or Taha or Da plus vowel. Listen to the words and write them on your paper. You will hear each word three times. After that, you will see the correct spelling and you can check your answer. You will have 15 seconds to write each word and also 15 seconds to look at the answer. If you need more time, you can of course pause the video. Pay attention to the use of the letters E and E. Also pay attention when you need to write PA or PAHA, KA or KAHA and TA or TAHA. Natambo aro saibo. Sagaba. Pibok. 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 Ansarao saibo. Pibok. Nigaba Dukung ni Dukung ni Dukung ni Answer out Chaibo Dukung ni
Hamgaba Bikeng 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 Answer out Chaibo Bikeng Beregaba Tumatok 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 Answer out Chai Tribo Tumatok Bangagaba Tabaratwa 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 Ansarao Taibo Tabaratwa Gorokaba Dipingok 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 Answer out Chai Tribo Dipingok Senegaba Dupelengok 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 Answer out Chaibo Dupelengok Chat gukaba Dekhepni 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 Answer out Chaibo Dekhepni The Kogaba The Kurayok The Kurayok The Kurayok Answer out Chaibo The Kurayok Chai gukaba Timimi wa Timimi wa Timimi wa Answer out chai bo Timimi wa Exercise Jammok Here is a list of all the words in the dictation. Pause the video if you want to look a bit longer. Let's do one more exercise. This time it is about word structure. Please get your pen or pencil and paper ready again.
instructions you will see 10 words find the meaningful parts of each word and separate them with a hyphen for example the word ta bai yokno has the meaningful parts ta bai ok and no so you write these with hyphens like this The words will be visible for 10 seconds only, so pause the video to do this exercise. When the exercise is finished, you will see the solutions. Poraibo aro saibo. Exercise Jammo. Here Here are the solutions. What have we seen in this video? Some words in Atong have a prefix. We have seen two prefixes. The prefix P as in the words Pibok, Pinak, Picham, Pikeng and the prefix da or taha plus vowel, where the vowel is the same as the following vowel of the root, as in the words dukungok, dekepok, dikirinok, depelengok, deteyok, tagalok, tunukok, timimibo, termenok. It should be very clear by now that Atong spelling shows the structure of the words. All the meaningful parts are written in their appropriate forms. Do not write any unnecessary consonants and use the letters E and E correctly. Tong spelling is clear and easy to teach and learn. Chit tham ge bak kam jamo, chai ge bao metella. Sing ge bak ganang chido, ma atong ba bao na sik chido. Ie video cha machi gan nang ge bao sai ge bao hap chi sai ari bo. If video wow nem nukai mung, like button chi sik de bo. Wal nam.